Hi, uh, hi, Arnie. Um, hey, George. A big talking point, mate. Nesta. A uh, couple of months ago, there was a bit of concern about his maturity. Why? Why do you think he's now ready to handle handle this environment? Mate, uh, <clears throat> probably his reaction to that. Um, you know, he uh, obviously he, he wasn't selected with the Ollie Roos, but uh, his reaction after that was was very good. Um, <clears throat> you know, he's got the he's got the quality, he's got the ability, and now it's time for him to show. Um, but I will say that <clears throat> um, it was about three or four weeks ago. I reached out to his agent Adrian Griffin. Um, I reached out to Nesta, spoke to Nesta, <clears throat> and it was all about. Uh, he was moving to Germany on the 8th or 9th of uh, June and for him to be selected, we had to get that change from Bayern Munich so he could have stayed with us with the FIFA window and also <clears throat> around his match fitness because uh, he hadn't played a game with Adelaide for four weeks and uh, it was important that I went down to watch the uh, All-Stars game and to see how he physically was as well as uh, some other players. So, yeah, he showed that... Uh, he was ready, and uh, that's why he's selected. <coughs> Sorry. Just, just on that, Arnie. <coughs> like, obviously, he made some comments last week um, uh, regarding going to play for Burundi or Tanzania. Given that you, you've been speaking to him for a month, what did you kind of make of that? Yeah, look, I was surprised, uh, but the the the, the, bit, the major point of that, George, was the fact that he said his dream is to play with the Socceroos, and uh, when I spoke to him. Uh, last week, uh, that was his dream, and uh, his dream will be fulfilled. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Joey, we'll come to you. <clears throat> cool. um, hi, Arnie. I guess good morning for you, mate. I hope you're going well. Yeah. Um, aside, aside from Nestor, mate, obviously there's a few veterans that you've rested for this squad. Uh, obviously, Matty Ryan's the big one, but there's a few other veterans that you've um, kept in. What's been your rationale for leaving some players out, keeping some other players in on the more veteran established front? Um, what what veterans are they, Joey? Well, you've left out Matty Ryan, uh, but uh, Jackson Irvine, who I imagine is still sort uh, nursing a hangover, is in the uh, Jackson side. Jackson Ir get rest. Jackson Irvine selected. Yeah, yeah, I know he's in the squad, but <coughs> yeah. Matty Ryan isn't. Yeah, so yeah. Why, oh, okay, what's the sorry. For that? Yeah, no, Matty, uh, he's uh, got a small issue with his knee, and it's just I feel that uh, unless we give him that period now to to tidy that up, and and uh, when I say that, he's as good as gold. But uh, he's had a heavy season, especially after the Asian Cup. Uh, he's off contract at RZ Alkmaar, and it's important that he gets his club uh, form sorted, uh, club sorted out. Um, we have, <clears throat> obviously, uh, other goalkeepers. It gives us an opportunity to look at it. But I'll, one thing I will say, Joey, is my intention and my expectations are winning these two games and performing. And uh, it's not a matter of resting people through, you know, those type of things. It's players that are available and ready to play these games. And some players haven't played for quite a while. Uh, as I said, uh, in Nesta's case and other A-League players, Taggart, Stamatopoulos and... Uh, that was, again, important that I went to the All-Stars game to see how they were. Uh, but some players that I have rested, like Sam Silvera as well, he's come off the back of, you know, a 50-game season where, you know, he left the A-League and played 23, 24 games from the Mariners, and he's quite uh, fatigued. So what's important for me is, we're, yes, creating a bit of depth, but also the welfare of the player uh, at this moment in time and making sure that... Uh, they're ready for pre-season at their clubs as well, and they're ready for September. And I guess maybe Sammy's being rested has opened the door for Daniel Izani to come back into the squad. I know you called him <coughs> up um, during that weird COVID period when you were having uh, border <laughs> issues, but now he's properly back in. What's he done to earn his place back in? And uh, I guess, what are you expecting from him this coming window? Well, it's great that uh, I will say that around Nestor and also Daniel, it's the excitement of the fans. And uh, it's exciting for me also to see them uh, in the squad, but it's also about performance. And uh, Daniel is, uh, for me, I think he's had a very good season under Tony Popovich. And I think Tony Popovich has got the best out of him. And uh, you can see his work rate defensively has improved out of sight. Uh, he still has that action, and what I have been impressed with is his final ball or his final pass or the, his end product. And uh, that has, uh, you know, stepped up a level, which uh, is great. 
And uh, it gives, again, gives us an opportunity here for Daniel to come across and uh, fit back into the mould of the Socceroos. And, and, but it's all about attitude as well. And uh, these guys are coming in, fitting into the culture and fitting into what we, uh, our expectations of what we expect from them and them getting ready for these games. <clears throat> Thanks, Matty. Hey, Arnie. Um, hey, Vince. Just on uh, Harry Sutar, um, obviously we know he's had a difficult situation this season uh, with Leicester City and not getting any game time. What's, yep. what's the latest with him uh, in terms of his club future? I know you're probably discussing it with him because he's so important to the team. It looks like his coach is about to, about <laughs> to potentially go to, go to Chelsea, so I'm not sure how that really changes his circumstances. Yeah. Yeah, look, Vince, uh, it's a good question because he, Harry's not in yet. We've had a, we are here and I am here in uh, Bangkok at the moment. Boys are arriving today and tomorrow uh, for us to get a bit of a, a preparation for the acclimatisation here at the moment, um, which is important. Harry is obviously one I will sit down when he gets here and see what's happening because uh, it's important, you know, not just for us, but also for Harry Sutter that uh, he sorts out his club uh, career. And uh, he gets playing because it's, uh, it's gone on pretty much a bit too long now. But uh, what, he, what Harry does for us every time he comes in camp is always, uh, you know, great. And uh, we've got some depth now in that position. You know, it's, uh, it was hard <coughs> to, you know, it's hard when uh, picking the centre-back side of it now. You've got Kai Rolls, Cam Burgess in the Premier League. You've got Harry Sicardi, uh, you know, Thomas Deng and these guys that... Uh, have done exceptionally well for us, and you've got some good ones coming through. So it's important that uh, Harry sorts out his club career. Yeah, I was going to ask about that position in particular, just with um, Sakati as well having a strong season. Yeah. Uh, with Palmer, looks like he's going to be a, a Serie A player next season, hopefully consistently. Yeah. Um, is it is it seriously now crossroads sort of time for for guys like Harry because you know you've got a really talented young player there knocking at the door. Yeah, look, I wouldn't say crossroads. We might have to find a way to fit them all in, uh, and that's that's important, you know, because we don't get much training time. And but <clears throat> as you said, Vince, you got uh, you know uh, uh, Alessandro playing in the Serie A next year, which is incredible for for the nation, and that was the most important thing. Is uh, you know we get rewarded with those type of things as a nation when the players are doing well at their clubs and playing at a, a higher level. And Cam Burgess getting prom uh, just getting promoted with Ipswich in the EPL, and Jackson Irvine, Connor Metcalf getting promoted into the Bundesliga one. You know, it, it sh uh, for for the national team in the future, it should be, you know, it should be great for us. <clears throat> Marco, thank you. Marco, are you there, mate? You're on mute, Marco. Come on, Marco. <clears throat> you can do it. Sorry, I just uh, sorry that. <clears throat> Yeah, what's the name? The um, uh, the online thing just uh, played out. Ah, okay. You still there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just back on. Uh, sorry, only just back on. Um, Daniel. Uh, um, I guess his last time he played for Australia was at the 2018 World Cup. In terms of his sort of maturity, how have you seen that? Do you think he's better, sort of, you know, versus sort of handle the sort of maybe I don't know maybe maybe um sort of what's the name the sort of expectation that um, was on him back then, that it may still be on him now. Yeah, look, mate, let's not forget the uh, tough period the kid went through. And when he went to Celtic, done his ACL, was out for a year. Uh, <clears throat> he obviously came back to Australia and didn't really work out that well for him at MacArthur. And, and he's had to rebuild. And uh, obviously with that, and again, I think Tony Popovich has done an outstanding job with him. He's got him fit and uh, he's got him hungry again. And I have to say, probably last six, seven weeks is probably the best I've seen Daniel since I had him with the Olympic team and before that. And uh, this is his opportunity, mate, to, to come in. You know, as I said, with a non-selection of Sammy Silvera, we've still got Martin Boyle and Lecky that can play on that side of the pitch. Uh, and Daniel gives us that option that you can play on both sides. But uh, it's, it's, this is uh, a great opportunity for the kid to come in and show us, show us how much he wants to be with you know, with the Socceroos and how much he wants to play for the nation, but also how much he wants to go to the, Amer uh, the US World Cup. And so this is, again, an opportunity for some of these players to come in and build more depth in our squad. We still have the ongoing <clears throat> factor that uh, I've got to look at, and it's always, you guys know what I'm like with, with the, you know, 
different plans and a long-term plan. But, you know, there's a couple of these players that I'm bringing in now that are at the end of the season, but I might not be able to pick them in September or October because uh, the A-League hasn't started. And uh, if I don't do it now and give Stamatopoulos and, and, you know, and as I said, Daniel and, and Nesta these, uh, this opportunity now to show us while they're fully fit at the end of the season, then, uh, you know, it could take another six months. So it's, uh, it's important that uh, the boys come in and they're in good shape and uh, we get the best out of them for these two games. Luke, we'll come to you. Hey, mate, just on um, Cameron, Cameron Devlin, he's been out of favour for, for a bit. What have you seen in him in, in recent months to get him back in the squad? Yeah, look, Marco, game time. <clears throat> and look, uh, there's, we've got a, a number of players that are out injured. Riley McGree, obviously, and, and Callum Neuenhoff. At heart, he, he, you know, he's one that I've been watching for a, over a year now. And, you know, if he was fit, it was a good chance he was in the squad as well. And, uh, you know, we've got a number of injuries and this uh, gives the opportunity for Cam to come back. And he's been doing well at hearts and playing a lot of football at hearts uh, to come back. And uh, again, this is what this is about. Show me, you know, show me why you want to be with the Socceroos and show us that mentality of, you know, uh, why you want to be part of this journey to America. Because uh, we, you know, every time we go into camp, obviously the expectations are always high uh, to, to do the nation proud, but also it's down to the individual's mentality as well of how much he wants it. And uh, getting Cam back in after having him at the World Cup in 2022 in Qatar, I had him with the Olympic team. He had a bit of a down period, but uh, he's been playing a lot of football at hearts of late, and uh, it's good to see him back. Hey, Arnie, hope you're good, mate. I'm um, just wondering what you made of your impromptu appearance on the back page last <laughs> night. Mate, I have to say I had no idea. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when I got asked a question, or just before, because I'm in Bangkok, the phone cut out. So I didn't hear anything. I didn't even know Robbie was on the back page at that stage. But I think it turned out very well. <laughs> Yeah, not like uh, Robbie Slater to stitch you up at all. Oh, no, no, that's uh, 100%. Although at least he said yeah. at least he said the truth. I'll never speak to him again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, just with Alessandro, in terms of this window, it's been, we know what happened with the sort of Oli Roos window and, and how it's difficult for him to get there. Um, just how keen are you to actually have a look at him. He hasn't had a lot of game time in green and gold, but he's been around the camp. No. So is this a, sort of his opportunity, this one? Yeah, 100%. Um, we played him against New Zealand, and his maturity for a young boy is outstanding. And uh, we played him against New Zealand, gave him that debut cap um, next to Harry Sutter. And, you know, he's, he's obviously got uh, the quality, and uh, you will see him play in either one or two of these games. I think it's important that uh, he gets to know us well. But he f he's fit in perfectly into the Socceroos when he's been in camp. Uh, and he's done uh, very well for us. But again, you know, the uh, it's a club form and the club uh, qualities that uh, is, is the great thing about uh, the future for the Socceroos. And uh, him getting promoted in Syria, he's going to play against, uh, you know, some of the best strikers in the world. And... We're going to benefit in the long run. I might uh, I'll come to uh, Ben now. Hi, <clears throat> Annie. With uh, Nestory and also Sakadi, I think may still be able to switch allegiances. Are you tempted to give them a minute or two in a World Cup qualifier to lock him in as a one or, uh, Australian international? One or two. Permitting? One or two minutes. That's a, is that a bit too well, long? Whatever's. whatever's <laughs> No, look, it's not about that. Honestly, it's... I would never force anyone to play for the nation unless they really want it. And, you know, as I said, I've had the conversations with Nesta and he wants that, he wants that uh, emblem. He wants a badge on his heart and that's the most important thing. And I wouldn't be pushing just... <clears throat> I wouldn't be just capping people. I've never done that uh, because it's so important that uh, not only that the kid or the player wants it, it's also what the family want. And it's, it's very important that, you know, the mum and dad are behind those decisions and, and obviously they are. So uh, it's not just about capping them and getting them locked down for life. It's about them, you know, 
representing the nation that they want to represent and doing that nation proud. And I have no doubt that those two boys uh, will do that for a long, long time, not just for one or two minutes. Excellent. Glad to hear it. And um, with Matt Ryan out, I think it's a long time since we he hasn't been there. Who becomes a captain? Is it a Jackson Irvine who's a, who's the club captain and doing well? Yeah. Look, it's uh, <clears throat> it's a leader. And you know, we got some uh, obviously some younger boys in here for this camp, but uh, at the same time, the older players it adds more responsibility onto them around the leadership. With Jackson, who's uh, obviously uh, the captain at St Pauli and doing and has done a great job. In leadership, in even though Matty Ryan's been captain here, you got Matthew Leckie back, and and so a big reason that I bought Lex back was because <clears throat> of the amount of younger players we've got for this camp, uh, also as his beige. So you know we've got a good mixture and good blend in there, and uh, you know some of those younger boys that we call younger that are 24, 25, are starting to become better leaders as well as in terms of Kai Rolls and Harry Suta. Keanu Bacchus and uh, these these boys as well. So it's important that uh, with the young ones joining in camp, and I you know I'd just say as well that uh, you know we're bringing in Mark Milligan as uh, my second assistant for this camp uh, to give him that opportunity, but also him knowing Nesta at Clubland uh, can help Nesta settle in very very quickly here uh, instead of it taking you know maybe potentially a bit of time. And uh, Mark Milligan being here to help him out as well. Ben Smith, we'll come to you. Hey, Arnie. I uh, hope you're doing well. Just uh, on Adam Taggart, he's obviously had a great A-League men's season. Um, he's fought back from uh, not quite the international wilderness. Um, but what have you made of his uh, season-long strong form? Oh, look, outstanding. Um, you know, Perth had a, <clears throat> a very difficult season uh, as a team, but as the individual in tags, uh, getting leading goal scorer in the A League, it uh, you know it was was very very good. And tags is uh, you can just see it in his body, but in his in his demeanour, uh, the energy that he's bringing, that he's he's very very happy being back in Western Australia around the family and around his mates and uh, and at Perth Glory, and that's important, and that's. Probably why <clears throat> he's had the season that he's had, but uh, look, the fact that uh, we're playing Palestine in Perth is is uh, a great thing for Tags, and let's not forget Alessandro Sicardi is born and, and bred in in Perth and Cam Burgess. So we got a number of uh, you know boys that uh, have grown up in Perth, and I know that they're extremely excited to finally have a Socceroos game in Perth, and they're looking forward to that that uh, occasion. Just a uh, follow-up on Taggart in the kind of press release, you mentioned he'd be someone, you know, who will form part of that yeah. leadership group. Yeah. What have you made of his growth <clears throat> as a leader? Obviously, he took on the co-captaincy uh, for the glory this season. What have you made of his development as someone who can, you know, lead from the front this season? Yeah, look, and I'm sorry I left him out of uh, saying when I mentioned those leaders because I think that's been the thing that's impressed me a lot uh, with him at Perth Glory is his leadership. And... You know he's not a big he's not a big talker, uh, and you don't need to be. It's about action, and that's the way he leads is with action, and and how he inspires the rest of the boys. Uh, and you know, obviously, with a tough year at, at Perth, you could see him leading by example up the front. And whether it's just one bit of action and then scoring to you know lift the rest of the players, he did that many many times at Perth. And uh, as I said, he's not in a lot of ways he's not a leader by words, but by action, which is also important. Hi, oh, Arnie. You, you touched on uh, Matt Lucky being included for it, partly for his experience. How do you see his on-field role exactly. playing out, especially with those young attackers coming in that you've mentioned, Lex. as well as Cassini as well? You said Lex, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So how, sorry. How's he yeah. going to fit in with all those? <coughs> yeah. Look. I, I, yeah. I, there's one uh, huge benefit with uh, Lex, and that is he can play four or five positions, and uh, you know he can play left wing, right wing, number nine, number eight. He's been showing that at uh, Melbourne City this year. And Lex is always, again, his leadership that he brings in, but also his quality. And, uh, you know, to have Lex around is always important for, you know, a number of the boys. And uh, it's important for us that, uh, you know, we keep him going because uh, he has that physical capacity to, 
I believe anyway, to, to get to the next World Cup and a lot of it's down to himself and I know he has that motivation. So it's good to have him back. And Jordy Boss, uh, any particular position you see him sort of settling into? Obviously, he's capable of playing in a few different yeah. places down there. In the <clears throat> yeah, look, again, if you look at that, uh, if you look at the squad, you know, Craig Goodwin's out with broken ribs um, and uh, it gives an opportunity on that left-hand side. And I picked, you know, those wingers in, in, in uh, Nesta and Daniel Arzani and uh, Boyley and Lecky that can play on both wings. But also, Geordie Boss can play on the left wing as well. And he's shown that at the Asian Cup. Uh, you know, Westerlo, he's uh, playing more as a wing back. He's up and down the whole sideline. So we can do that as well. And he's got, uh, he brings in that quality of, uh, you know, the, the end product with his cross. And he's scoring, starting to uh, score some goals as well, which is great. So we'll have a look and see where it's at. But uh, the most important thing at the moment is the boys are getting here. You know, today, tomorrow, and we get an opportunity to four, four or five days here in Bangkok to acclimatise and get ready for what's ahead of us in, in Bangladesh, and we have every player ready for that occasion. All right, guys, we'll have uh, just last follow-up, one from Joey and one from Vince. Sorry, Mark, I know you've got your hand up, but um, we'll just go with, with one each, Joey and Vince, and then we'll have to, uh, have to wrap up. Cool. Um, cheers, mate. Uh, Arnie, getting back to what you said about forward planning, uh, obviously transfer window is opening now around the world. We've already touched on Harry about how him needing a shop window, but Ryan Strange, a free agent after leaving yeah. St. Mirren. Jeff Nisbet's talked about looking for a, the right move, not just a move. Apostolos Stamtolopoulos, there's been interest in him. How much is Agent Arnie going to be at work in this window? Are you thinking about players that need a shop window and how you can help them out with their next move? I don't know how I'm an agent. I don't get paid for it. <laughs> I'm not allowed to do that, Joey. No, look, I think what's important is the next step. And, and you touched on that point. You know, a lot of times players, uh, the step is too big, too high. Uh, and then they end up not playing. What's important is they, one step at a time, they go up the ladder one step and uh, they get the right club that suits them and or they go to the, the right country that, the style of football suits them as well. So a lot of times the players will reach out to me and ask me about my advice, if there is advice I can give for them on the style of the country of football that they're going to play or or whatever. And uh, so I'm always here to help, uh, help with that type of thing because it's important that the kids and the players uh, do take that next step in the right way. And I think Daniel Arzani has spoken out about that. I have seen things where... He spoke out about, you know, when he went to Celtic and maybe it wasn't the best decision for him in terms of the way the style of Scottish football was and that where it is for others. So, again, it's important that uh, those type of things are, are right for the player. All right, Vince, last one for you, mate. Cheers, mate. Uh, I mean, just our uh, semi-regular check-up on Christian Volpardo. You had, uh, obviously, that dinner with, uh, with the Francesco Totti. I hope it was nice. You'd want it to be for the price point. I know you didn't play, but anyway. Uh, where, where's sort of that all at with Christian? Um, uh, and what did sort of uh, Toddy tell you about, uh, you know, your hopes of hopefully having him play uh, for Australia one day? To be honest, Vince, I didn't even bring it up with him because I didn't get the chance. He was, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of Italian uh, football fans that were there that wanted to spend some time with him, photos and signatures and all that. Uh, I've been in touch with uh, Christian and, and his mother and uh, the kid has chosen to play for Italy this camp in the under-20s um, in, the, in the tournament. So, <clears throat> as I said, it's, uh, I can't, I, I'm always in contact and I'm encouraging them to play for Australia, but at the same time, the kid has to want to and his mum and his dad have to want that as well. But uh, the last conversations I've had with them, which is not that long ago, um, and I uh, suggested this camp and this window. It was more based around that uh, he wanted to play for Italy in the under-20s, which still makes him eligible to play for us. It's not like if he plays you know, junior national teams that he can't play for uh, Australia or the Socceroos, but uh, the kid at this moment has chosen that. And I think uh, you know, with Sassuolo getting relegated uh, in the, the Serie B, that uh, the kid uh, has a lot to think about at this moment.